hot, but we're going to drive this thing for the first time today. We have a little bit to do, so let's jump into what I did. Very important, I have zinc additive, and that just helps the cam to be protected and all the other various metals, bearings, all that stuff. Just a good idea, especially on first break-in. I'm also using diesel oil. That's known for having more ZDDP in it, or zinc. So uh, all they had was the SAE 30. I'm sure we'll be fine with that. I should just be able to put a socket on that, a drill on that, impact wrench on that, and it should work. We're gonna say that got an oil pressure. Okay, let me show you the level of ghetto that this is. I filled up the carburetor bowl, not too ghetto. However, uh, the fuel that's been in this thing has been in this thing for a couple years now. So I have a fuel hose into a gas can down there. So we're gonna pray that this thing doesn't catch on fire. Moment of truth. If I said I wasn't terrified, I would be lying. Won't start. You know how some people pay attention to what terminals that they use on the starter? I'm not one of those people. Let's try that again. Okay, I had to mess with the timing a bit, but... Well, I guess this oil explosion explains the smoke earlier. I'm pretty sure it's stuck in third gear. So I don't know how we're gonna get it out of third, but it's in third. Well, what we found out was that this guy was moved way over here, which was not going to work. And so we moved him back over here in the center, and this is where it needs to be. This is where it needs to be, right there at the synchros. Now we can put the side cover back on with new RTV. After we clean the old RTV off, we should be good. I'm bleeding the master cylinder. Uh, you're supposed to bench bleed it, but you can do that in the truck. All you do is you get some old brake lines and you kind of loop them inside of the master cylinder. Make sure that the ends of the lines are inside fluid. And then you just pump the thing until it's free of air bubbles. I got the other calipers on. That went smoothly. Uh, new brake hose. Right there. The old Burb still has the new tires from the truck, so I'm gonna swap those back on. Helpful hint, if you have one of these, spray paint the correct one, a color, and then you know exactly which one to use every single time, and you don't have to go fishing for it. I'm not gonna lie, that looks kinda derpy. Real derpy. That's fine, we have more tires for this thing, so we can put like decent tires back on it. I probably use these for a little too long on the Suburban. I've had the tires for quite a while, but I've just been too lazy to put them on, because I do not like doing 31s. It's a little bit of a pain, but uh, now I guess I kind of have to. Let's see if we can move this thing out of here in its own power. This I just needed to loosen a bit. I put the actual transmission in first and loosened this. And so now it should stay in first. All right, I'm being eaten alive by gnats small oversight 
I forgot to properly attach the shifter cables so one came off. So uh, I got stuck here for a bit eating, being eaten alive by these gnats. But it's back on and we're going back home. It died. All right, well, a few issues, but we drove it for the first time. We're gonna have to fix the shifter linkage because, you know, that can't keep happening. And it also kept dying on me. I think because the, the throttle screw's not up high enough, but easy fixes. I'm gonna get this thing registered and we're gonna call it good. Start driving it and working out the kinks. So that's about all for this one. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully you're as happy as I am that I got this thing driving. As usual, you be good while I'm gone. I'll see you next time. Have a good week.